settle down after a big trip. <laughs> yes, back into it. It's um, yeah, no, it's um, hmm. It, it, it's kind of, you know, it's funny, being, it's been a bit of an avalanche since I've been back actually. I think all, everything, it's a danger of going away, everything does kind of yeah, that's right. just build, build up a little bit. Yeah. So Charles, tell us about the Charles Landry visit. So Charles came, well Charles is already coming over for form and we've got a bit of a partnership with, with form. Anyways, Charles and I agree to agree on lots of things. So it's more that he can say in a way and say as an outsider in a way that, um, Yes, but people gets people's attention. But whilst there's a sort of generalised, this comes up again and again, a generalised cultural, social sense of what Fremantle should be, the economic is detached. I've never heard, I haven't heard anyone saying, this is the economic future of Fremantle, this is what we're going to survive on, this is going to be the thing that's going to pay for all these social inclusion projects that we need and want and so on. And that seems to me a major uh, disconnect because of that, I don't want to call it confrontational, but these camps of, yes, let's say pro-development, anti-development or whatever else, this question of being flexible and operating through these things was seen as a major weakness. Um, so that, that was quite useful in terms of him talking, you know, thinking about Fremantle as a creative city, thinking about how we activate these spaces. Because I really am trying to, one of the f focuses that I've got over the next little while is about how we really activate High Street, in King Square. The centre of Fremantle has been a dead space for as long as I can remember, but it's a great space. My experience from my, my travels around actually have shown me that it's not very hard to make it into a great space. And yeah, it's about creating good social spaces, and I guess that's one of the aspects of sustainability. We haven't talked about that much. We've talked a lot about energy and climate change and, and, yeah. and that, those kind of implant planning. And they're very linked, of course. Yeah. The more active social spaces, the more people yeah. and, many, and, it's, and it, it is very much linked as well because as we get more people down this end of town, this becomes more and more of a centre. Right. 3,000 people living, 2,000 people working, all of a sudden it's got, you know, it, that, this becomes a much more of an important space in the city centre. And then, of course, you have the conflict with the church, which is right next to it. <laughs> and uh, active space is not what they're actually seeking. It could be, um, yeah, it, could, it just could make... What, what is the, the dead part, the dead heart, Fremantle? <laughs> a bit more lively. Yeah. 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 And I would have thought that a good church in the centre of Fremantle would want to see an active heart, not a dead heart. Um, but it would be interesting to see how that one works out. Yeah. And, of course, it would be gentrifying the space, and therefore the Aboriginal people will move on. Mm. Um, and that issue remains. Yeah, it, and it's the big issue that I have no solution to. In fact, it's probably the issue I get you know, calls about and visits about the most. And I, it's it's so challenging for me. I just don't. Yeah. I mean, what's interesting though is that um, discovering that no one's dealing with it. Nobody deals with adult disadvantaged people's health. Mm. There is no safety net, in, and it's interesting. Okay. And, and there's no 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 no, gov no government department which says oh, that's our role. And uh, so then it's really left. So we're, we've got this real challenge about, for me, I mean, we've been very successful actually in terms of part of the one, one aspect in terms of already pushing them out of the square through increased police presence and those kind of things. But what we saw done is just push it somewhere else. Yeah. And then I get different, different complaints from different people. Yeah. And, um, and then also it's not a solution in the sense of these people are still just drinking themselves to death slowly and spending most of their time fighting and, and living really, yeah, and so I, I don't know what the answer is, but, um, but we are still getting the Noongars, or the Noongar elders, to actually just sit down and, and try and work out a solution for themselves, but it's very hard, I must say, even they have a sense of not knowing where to, where to go with it. Mm. How do you see the journey, you, you're nearing the end of the year, is there... Some, something you need to finish before the end of the year? Or the, or We've got a whole bunch of things I want to make sure we lock away before the end of the year. I think um, the East End will definitely will be coming to council in for the December meeting. So we should hopefully sign all that away. Yeah, that'll get started. Um, we're doing, I don't know if we've spoken about this, the, our small houses scheme? Uh, not much. I think you mentioned it. Yeah, yeah uh, which I think is a really interesting sustainability and affordability initiative. What we're doing is allowing people on, with certain size blocks, 400 square metres or more, to build very small houses. Less than 
Well, less than 55 square metres. Yeah, that's tiny, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah, granny flat. Yeah, granny flat without the granny. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you do, because I mean, it's currently allowed in terms of if as a granny flat, but it's got to have a shared laundry and all those kind of things. What we're saying is, you can just build a self-contained, small one-bedroom studio apartment um, you know, with a, possibly a loft in it, and it doesn't even need planning approval. It needs build building, it needs, it needs, it needs building approval, but if you meet the key criteria in terms of the size and the setbacks and those kind of things, it's, as of right, you can you can build it. And what it does, all of a sudden it creates a whole array of dwellings. It does density without the way we currently do it, which is just to build houses that cover the entire site. And um, actually you can, um, and they're for a different kind of part of the population that just want to rent, that, that uh, they're, they're cheap, they're affordable, and they have diversity. They're, they're for students, they're for older people. And just it all adds all that flexibility, and, but also probably increasing population um, yeah, pretty pretty substantially. I mean, and what that links in for us, I guess the other interesting thing, so we're currently responding to the final draft of Directions 2031, which has been quite good for us. They've certainly acknowledged, I think, that Fremantle's, you know, they had downgraded us. We're now on that even keel with all the other centres outside of Perth. Um, and they're all saying, well, you know, if you want to be a secondary centre, then these are the, you know, these are some things you've got to do. They've put our population growth target at 3,500 extra dwellings. Um, but we're going to probably come back and say we can do more than that. We're going to probably put it up to about four and a half thousand dwellings, which is, so you know, eight nine thousand people, uh, extra people. And in a, given our population hasn't budged from about twenty six thousand for three decades, um, that's actually a pretty, you know, that's a substantive yeah. turnaround. I think. It is on the academic side of things. The the, the movement that is anti development is now calling itself degrowth. This is the new fundamentalism, I can mm. see. In the end, it's, it's got appeal because it seems to be a, uh, a romantic winding back of the clock to just simpler times and all that sort of thing. It's, I mean, I, it also sounds very academic in the sense it's going to have no, no political traction anywhere in the real world. I guess what it doesn't do, and what I, what I feel like in that connection of the global context, what we need to be doing is showing what a sustainable society looks like. And, and then, so then China and India and the rest of the world can actually grow in that direction by just saying, oh, we give up, we just got to go backwards. He's actually saying, well, there, is, there's no, there was only one, one model for, for growth and that failed. <laughs> so then you, so it's the choice of growing or not growing. And that's actually, that makes no sense to me. We actually got to find, we actually have to find a way of doing sustainable growth. It's the only way forward. Um, and I guess also, I mean, more radically, to take that back to carbon, we need to reduce our emissions 50 to 80%, depending on the time frame and how you look at it. Um, you can't do that by just not growing. I mean, anyway, by keeping your society the same and, and have, you actually need to transform your society. And that's a totally different model in terms, of, in terms of how you invest in infrastructure. That's not not growing. That's actually saying you've got to transform. And, I, I, don't, I don't see how they feel like that not growing is a solution because the reality is we're, we're unsustainable in our current form. A lot of the work that we'll be doing in there will be case study based, so documenting and providing mm. that information to the rest of Australia. And sharing experiences. In many ways, that, that, that's really, I mean, it's interesting. I mean, in fact, I've just been going through some of this. We've got a climate change working group that's working on some of this. And that, that, that it's interesting seeing how they've kind of got stuck a bit around I don't know what to do. And so actually that key approach of actually sharing what's worked in other, in other cities about how you actually come up with a low carbon plan for a city, which is what, what we're trying to do, um, is, is going to be key. So I've been, I mean, I haven't been, I've been, been fully engaged in it because I've been away and just been a bit busy, but I'm just going through it now saying, well, there's all these things we can do. But it's interestingly, it's interesting that um, it is quite hard in terms of imagination about how, how you, because it is, it's a, radi it's a radical transformation of, of, of our cities and um, no one's done it yet. I mean, the city of Sydney is the most interesting one, I think, at the yeah. moment. Yeah. Um, and, uh, now, we want to bring Alan Jones over. Okay. Uh, I, what I'd like to do is just find a time next year when he could Great. come. Great. Uh, we, we, we might even be able to support that in some way. Yeah. And the reason I say we should support it is that we need to get him to sit down with our engineers and our, and our tech people. Yeah 
and explain, you know, this is not just a pie in the sky, tried 10 dream, it's actually, yeah. it, it, it's something that has happened yeah. and you can do.